with Song Talk Radio. Welcome to Song Talk Radio, the show with songwriters talking to other songwriters about the craft of songwriting. We share tips, tools, and techniques, and together we all become better at writing songs. I'm your host, Neil Modi, and with me, my co-host, Phil Emery. How you doing, Phil? I, I am warm. I am You're actually warm. warm. Uh, summer has finally come to St. John's, Newfoundland. It uh, went up to a wonderful 25 degrees, and nice. it's, uh, yeah, it's really nice. It's been single digits for the last uh, couple of weeks so it's nice to be uh yep finally joining the summer folks nice oh we could use a little bit of single digits to wipe away all that smoke yeah that's right here so (laughs) yeah all right and uh everyone else please send in your comments and questions to at song talk radio on facebook or instagram or feedback at songtalk.ca for the email and we'll share your thoughts on the show and please visit songtalk.ca to see the show post for this episode to find links to resources we mention and to download lyric and chord sheets to follow along with the songs that we feature and uh, just another reminder um about our songwriting challenge for 2023 is to write a song you know in an unusual usual mode or a mode you're not familiar with and uh, of course uh, once again we are inviting our listeners um, and anybody else um, to contribute their answers to the challenge and uh, as we've done before in the last couple years we'll feature your songs on special episodes um, where we talk about the listener um, answers to the challenge Um, of course after Phil and I share our answers to the challenge um, in the coming weeks uh, sometime Um, how's your challenge coming along Phil it's um Going okay. I I thought I was going to work in Lydian. I'm not so sure now. Mm-hmm. Um, I think because what I thought was Lydian wasn't actually Lydian. So um, <laughs> yeah. So I was I was trying to hit that you know that sharp four, but um, then Lydian. I realized I was just going like like four one or you know I was going. It, it wasn't really in that one key, but it's. So I'm not sure if it'll be Lydian or not. It's, yeah, uh, the, 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 that's the, I don't want to call it a trap, but that's the trap I've fallen into playing around with modes in the past is I always start in a mode and then before you know it, you're back in major or you're back in minor. Yeah. <laughs> or whatever. Yeah, that's, that's you know, just, you're just kind of leads you there. So again, this challenge to, to stick in the one in the one mode, which is not a requirement. Listeners, no, you can you no. can flip modes, you can change modes, you can um, do modal interchange, however you want to treat this. It's really open to your your interpretation. There should be um, one that's not major and minor. Yeah, I mean, you know, we, we say as long as it's a mode you're, you're not familiar with. So if you tell us you're not familiar with major, we will give you the benefit of the doubt. But we know you're lying. <laughs> we know you're lying. Don't lie. <laughs> Don't lie. <laughs> Okay, and uh, just another um, a bit of a, a bit of a tech news um, thing. I, I got an email today that um, the optical disk drives class action lawsuit uh, deposited twenty dollars in my in my bank account. And this is this is what this, this is like the second time this has happened where you sign up for one of these class action lawsuits if you you know bought an optical disk drive you know twenty years ago or ten years ago or whatever it was, and and a bunch of companies you know colluded and and uh, conspired to fix the prices of these things so they you know made a class action suit and you know with no receipts or anything like that you just put your your name and your email into the thing and they and you know a year later or more than that <laughs> you know you get a little a little ka <laughs> it's like not a bad idea but you know i remember the first time i saw one of these things i was like is this real I even posted it on facebook is this thing yeah, real? yeah. <laughs> or is it just a fraud but it turns well, out they're real and it, and it happens all the time so what was the suit over it, it was over optical disk drive. So if you bought if you bought a PlayStation, if you bought a CD ROM, if you bought you know a computer with a CD ROM in it, then you you were you, then you're okay to apply for this for this challenge because it was a bunch of companies that fixed the prices on those things and made a sort of all copy. And and uh, can you still apply? For it. What's that? Can you still apply? No, it was it was last November. The deadline was last November. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, keep keep your eye open for the next one. <laughs> so you <laughs> kind of made twenty dollars in in the music industry, kind of. Yeah, yeah, twenty dollars in the in the computing industry. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, one one other um, uh, podcast I heard today, uh, CBC Commotion um, had a had a podcast about Gen Z concert goers are drinking less. So uh-huh. the kids are going to shows, but alcohol is not a thing like it was before, which of course is. 
really bad for the venues because that's what they rely that's on where they a make lot. Money, yeah. That's where mm-hmm. they make the money is is the booze, right? But um, mm-hmm. but you know, but the the Gen Z uh, folks are yeah, they're 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 not doing that as much anymore. So it remains to be seen what the what the outcome of that is going to be. So they're, what are they doing instead? Vaping. Yeah. They're vaping. They're they're having a drink at home. They're they're they're, okay. they're they're supposedly more health conscious or more wellness conscious, okay. and realize that alcohol is pretty poisonous <laughs> <laughs> in general. And you know it's it's not a good thing for anybody. So there, there's that. And and you know inflation. You know they're already throwing money true. for a ticket and thing. Why do we need to spend you know seventeen dollars on a cocktail that? You know, That's a good point. We could yeah. otherwise save. So. Yeah, it's a number of factors. They talk about a bunch of this stuff on the on the podcast. We'll put a link in the um, in the show notes. Oh, very cool. All right on. Okay, um, tonight we're going to be talking to Alex Warms and Aaron John about their new song "Where Did We Go Wrong," and here's a taste of their new song. Do you remember when we stay up for hours? Lost so much sleep back then cause of you It used to be hard to get you to stop talking But now you only speak when spoken to So tell me where did we go Something I can do Cause I don't know what Okay, songwriters Alex Worms and Aaron John met t- 10 years ago at a youth talent contest in Oshawa, Ontario, where they both performed original songs and tied for first place. They quickly bonded over their shared love of Coldplay, Keen, and Sarah Barry Ellis, and went on to write music and perform together often. Aaron would later, later move to Korea for four years, busking and teaching English, before eventually settling in Whitby, Ontario. He began to release original music in 2022 with his single Fresh, earning a semi-finalist position in the 2023 International Songwriting Competition. Now residing in Hamilton, Ontario, Alex is an in-demand performing artist, session musician, and screen composer. With two EPs and several singles released, she has appeared on CBC and community radio shows across Canada, as well as regional television programs. 2023 promises to be exciting for Aaron and Alex, who are both releasing new EPs this year. Welcome to Song Talk Radio, Alex and Aaron. Thank you. Having us. Great to have you guys on the show. So uh, you guys have known each other for a long time. What 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 made you want to write a song together now? That's going to be this, like, do you want to answer? <laughs> Should I answer? <laughs> Go ahead, Alex. Um, well, yeah, we, well, we met, like, all those years ago, and then um, I think we, you know what, now that I haven't, I haven't thought about this in ages, but I remember you used to send me, like, your your unfinished ideas and like we, we had talked about There's a lot of those. Um, yeah, <laughs> no, me too. the problem is I never send them to anybody. Um, <laughs> like we, I, I think we started talking about it fairly early on and it, it just didn't happen. Um, like writing a song know. together. Yeah. Well, I think you, it was mostly you sending me ideas and then I just wouldn't do anything with them. And then, um, cause I, I remember we performed a few times and then I, I mean, Aaron was in Korea for a while. Like we, we kept in touch. Um, but we were both cut off doing our own thing. I was studying biophysics for a while, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and, um, I think it, it, we, we just finally had the right song idea and um and the time because uh, this was still it, it's a little blurry for me at this point Aaron. like were we still kind of in like semi lockdown at the time or it was it was during the it was during the first uh song studio workshop that we went to i okay. think and it was that was during the pandemic so there was no in-person one so right so that would have been 2021 i think 
Yeah. 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 So we just kind of finally both had the time and the opportunity and uh, we were both kind of um, available. I I think that's my thought on that. Yeah. It took, I mean, 10 years is kind of a long time. We both had more time on our hands during the pandemic, so yeah, yeah for sure. Lots of time for COVID. Right. <laughs> yeah. How was the writing process? Was it what you thought it was going to be? Was it easier? Was it harder? Well, this one was interesting. Um, I, I had written the bones of the song like a long, long time ago, so it was kind of something that I brought in to the the kind of workshop, and then. Alex uh, encouraged me to to do more on the song, and she really helped uh, like build up the song some more. And we decided to make it a duet. Um, so it was not one of those ones that kind of just came together overnight. It was kind of like it's just been in the vault for a really long time, and it got rejuvenated. Um, yeah, in the past couple of years. Yeah, like we were we were at this songwriting workshop so it like a week straight of doing nothing but writing songs so like the ideas are flowing and like we were both I think it it puts you in a really kind of creative mindset once you start writing the ideas uh, kind of keep coming and we were um, messaging back and forth because this was a virtual workshop so we weren't actually physically in the same place Um, but we had been sending each other ideas back and forth and Aaron sent me that one. And I remember the, the message was kind of like, oh, I don't know about this one. I don't know if this is any good, but like, I don't know, here's, what do you think of this? And, um, I remember I, I'm kind of a, I try to keep it up. I'm a little bit of a control freak, would you say? (laughs) And I remember being so worried that Aaron, like I was trying so hard to convince him, like, no, this is a really good song. Like we, this absolutely needs to be recorded and released. And he was kind of going, oh, I don't know. And like, um, I remember being really kind of afraid that it wasn't going to get recorded and released. So I I got, I think I, I, I really was, was pushing for um I, I felt like we we needed to finish it and um and record it and I'm glad you did yeah me too because <laughs> it was it was really really fun um i was actually kind of sad when we finished it because we were spending so much time like working on it and it, it was uh it was a really really enjoyable process to be able to work with you on a song so um yeah it, it was just and, the, and then i think you're asking about the process yeah we, we just kind of I think a lot of it was texting. We we sent ideas back and forth, like the bridge um, was notes. the last part. Yeah, voice notes. The bridge was the last part to be finished. And then um, once the lockdown uh, was lifted, we, we just kind of, um, I went over to Aaron's place and we uh, we made a demo. And, and then I think that was kind of the end of the, the writing and kind of into production at that mm-hmm. point. Oh. Very cool. So, um, will you be working on more songs after this, or maybe we have other <laughs> songs that we've written together, but and we'll probably continue to be co-writing partners. And yeah, who knows? Um, I don't know if we'll we'll do another duet, but maybe we'll have another like song that we've written together, or maybe there will be another duet. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what we write. <laughs> have, have you guys, either one of you, done? Like on on your solo releases, you know, sometimes there's a co-writer, you know, where you're just bouncing ideas off of somebody and get some input, and, and then and then they become a, a co-writer. Have you done that in the past, or have all have individual writings been solely on your own? I did that with my debut single. It was a it was a co-write, mm-hmm. um, and then my other ones were not co-writes. Co-writing has been kind of new to me as well. Um, my first two EPs, actually, I think up until now, I, I this is the first co-write that has ever been released that I've been a part of. Um, but a lot of my upcoming uh, stuff uh, did have co-writers on it. So it, it's something that uh, I've been getting better at. I, I was always kind of hesitant to, uh, to write with other people um that way because i'm I, i'm not really a very spontaneous person um so i find that when when i do co-write it's usually um like exchanging ideas like not it's not necessarily all you know done in 
you know, a couple of hours in real time for me. I like to mess around on my own, um, but I'm warming up to it more um, mm -hmm. the more I write. Yeah, sure. and of course, of course, there are different ways of, of co-writing. You can do it over distance and over time or, mm -hmm. or do it all, all in the room together, I think. But but, but you, you say you're getting better, Alex. Did you, like, what, what, what would you tell Alex from a few years ago that, yeah. that you wish you knew? You know what? <laughs> I would actually tell her to just keep keep doing solo writes, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> really? I don't, you know, I don't... Um, I, I I think I like both and I have an appreciation for both. And I, I think, um, you know, there, there's also, you know, room for it. Like there was, again, it, it also depends on what you, what you classify as songwriting and what you classify as production and, and where do you think they overlap, right? Because even with this song, like when we, our, our producer, uh, Matt Riches, like added a lot through, Kind of like the instrument choices and, and stuff like that and I, that that also made the song quite different from even our first demo of it right but i think um back to what i was saying about co-writing though i i think in the songwriting community there's all there, there seems to me to be an emphasis on co-writing and i i understand why because if you put two or three minds together there's going to be ideas that one person alone wouldn't think of um, and maybe it gets done faster and, you know, there, there can be all of these benefits. But I, uh, I also think that one person, if you're writing, especially if you're writing something very personal, um, taking the time, um, even if it takes you, you know, weeks to finish the song instead of days, um, I think that can be very rewarding as well. And I think if you're, you know, going for your own authentic voice, which, I think often I am, um, you know, you, you can do that yourself. So I, 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 I'm, I, I'm a fan of solo writing personally. Um, I, it feels good I to like say you're the sole yeah. writer in the song too, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. You, you tend to agree with that, Aaron, or are you moving more towards co-writing now or? No, yeah, I agree with that. It's it like, yeah, it feels good to be the sole co-writer or so sole writer and just to have that creative um control to just like you know make yeah show your own authentic self that nobody else can show um and write lyrics that are really important to you um but it's also like co-writing i think is is uh i find I, i'm more inspired by co-writing sometimes because it just like i like i feel like i have to get the song done for the other person too so it's like i i'm forced to to work more on it more than like uh just holding myself accountable for all of the half songs that I've written, you know? Yeah, I, as someone who's um, started off co-writing in bands, it's, mm -hmm. I now write mostly on my own, and I miss that that kind of fun that you get with 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 other people so it's it's interesting it's i, I spend most of my life wor working with other people and it's just sort of more recently that i've been doing my own thing so so it's, it's such an interesting uh journey for everybody yeah what's the difference so but speaking of speaking about uh, you know being an authentic you know from a soul songwriter thing like like your song where did we go wrong was this was this a explicit choice to to make it a we song with a duet and it's that i wouldn't even say necessarily it's two different points of view it's kind of it's kind of a unified point of view but but still there are two voices and 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 the we factor was that a conscious thing then just because there was two of you at it i think that's why uh yeah i thought i, I think because it's about we like that's what makes it a kind of a good idea to do it as a duet i thought like because it's both both people are kind of singing about the same thing that the relationships because because you you said you wrote an original draft aaron way back when it was i mean I, I, was that still a, a we it could have been a we even if it's a solo yeah singer. it was still it was still a we because it was like it was like about a relationship yeah, yeah. so it was about yeah, like it was, it was a you and i we yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um but yeah I, I think i like it a lot better as a duet because it has the two different perspectives in it well, I was going to say because like we've both played this song solo before too and um it's uh it's done as it doesn't hit quite the same way 
For sure, because it, it works uh, with both verses being sung by the same person and not mm-hmm. had. But but when you it, and that that's really interesting too about um, how it subtly changes the meaning of the song when you have a second voice in there because it, there's it's not an exchange anymore. It's not a conversation anymore. It feels one sided. Um, you know, like you're singing someone uh, something to someone who's never going to hear you. Uh, when, when I sing it by myself, that's how I feel. Um, but it, yeah, I, I think the using we and then having it be two voices, it, that's a, I didn't really think about that or notice that um, until you brought it up. But you're right, like it, it makes, uh, it really makes a lot of sense. <laughs> Brings the emotion out more. Yeah. I wanted to um, talk about the chord ch- uh, choices. Because I think you have some really nice voice leading in the chords. Um, which, Thank you. Uh, that was um, Alan. Can you talk about that? Because I think this is something we, that has come up a couple of times in our discussions uh, about the importance of um, using voice leading within your within your chord choice. Not necessarily with your chord choices, but when you're choosing your chord voicings, you want to think yeah. about uh, voice leading. Could you talk a bit about that? Yeah, totally. Maybe, so, you can, maybe you can start, Alex, by defining what voice leading means <laughs> for our yeah. listeners who don't know. <laughs> sure. So voice leading, um, voice leading, when done correctly, means that instead of, for example, moving from root, the, 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 like from one root position chord to another root position chord, you can flip the order of the notes in your chord so that each each individual voice. Um, has to move the shortest distance possible from chord to chord. So that can mean inverting certain chords um, so that, yeah, you're not leaping all over the place. And it, it makes, uh, especially, you know, and I, I think when I think of voice leading, I mostly think of piano and voices, um, but certainly in, in other, you know, instruments or ensemble arrangements as well, it sounds um, smoother and connected um, rather than, you know, the opposite, falling all over the place. So what, what we played in this song, what I think was cool about it, can you hear this? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I've got, I'm pedaling, it's in the key of D, and we started on the tonic chord, D major. Um, I'm pedaling uh, the D at the bottom, um, meaning that you can kind of hear the drone of that D even when the chord above it changes. Mm. So... And um, if I had known we were going to do this, I could have put another camera on my hands <laughs> for you. <laughs> oh, that would have been clever. But, okay. um, but uh, so what I have here, I've got the D major chord, and I had um, the root and the third on the top in my right hand, and then I moved to a first inversion G major chord, but again with the D on the bottom. And then I move to a first inversion A major chord, again over D, and then back to G. And making that decision, Aaron was that that wasn't the original chord progression, I don't think. I think it's a variation of it that kind of came from, um, that those weren't the chords you were playing on guitar at first. Not not exactly, no. right? It was originally in the key of C. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'll show you what I originally, it was originally just C and F. It would go back and forth. But yes. It was like this little walk down, like. Just back and forth from C to F. And which yeah. Very, very different. Which, you know, and we, you know, we went actually, I know I'm getting, a, this isn't totally off topic, I promise. <laughs> we got to the studio on the first session and I thought it was going to be an acoustic you know, do it. That, that's what I think we were planning to do. And I was thinking, oh, we could throw like a fiddle on it or something. Um, but then it was Matt, um, our producer, who said, so what about piano? <laughs> and initially I thought, oh, no, like, because all of my songs are very piano heavy. And I, I just wanted to sing on a guitar song for once, quite honestly. <laughs> <laughs> but we just it, it just kind of you know we were I was messing around and, and this kind of um, you know we wanted uh, we, we had a discussion about um, switching it to being a piano based song what was that going to mean um, 
you know, for the mood and the whole feeling, right? And it, it kind of went from the guitars you could hear there a little bit was folky, you know, melancholy, you know, kind of a little sad, but more like nostalgic sounding maybe. Mm-hmm. When you bring it to piano, it's like, it, it, it's definitely a more intense kind of heartbroken kind of sound. Um, so we wanted, and we knew we were going to have like this, like, stumpy kick drum thing happening so again with this um and keeping the rhythm very very sparse leaving the space and having that d ringing out at the bottom um just just seemed to fit rather than you know if i did something like that something like this doesn't work doesn't doesn't sell the song at all. Yeah, I, I agree. That's probably a, a good choice. Right. And, and and keeping the keeping the pedal bass um, with the same note it, it imparts a certain amount of tension to the mm-hmm. whole verse, which is which is kind of you know it's what you want in your verse a lot of the time. So yeah, also, it's, it's, it's a very different feel than than what you were just playing, Aaron, on the guitar. Like, yeah, sure. Yeah, it changes a it changes a lot. Yeah, a lot, a lot, yeah, less, sure a lot less bouncy. Yeah, I think yeah. in your right hand, um, Alex, I think there is one note that doesn't change. Isn't there like one? constant note on the right hand uh uh no that's no, no it, it uh in the in the choruses uh in the choruses that is true so we've got a d pet uh, again we had a d pedal at the bottom for the verses and the bass and then in the choruses it was on the top you're right i mean it changed a little bit we had this little there. In, in the chorus, then you're moving around your bass. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Exactly. And and the, the tonic, yeah, yeah the right the top the, the top moves around a little bit, but we had just kind of throw some counter melodies in there, and then we had, of course had this this little motif that comes in a lot, um, mm-hmm. right, in yeah, different right instruments. Nice. Um, and, and you know, also since you're asking about voice leading, I got to throw some strings on it as well. That was really fun. Nice. Um, something I I got to uh, geek out on a bit and of course voice leaning in the strings is also um important. very important um yeah well, I, I, I mean i the, think the, i did okay <laughs> yeah the, the, vo- the voice leading thing is is always interesting because like you say piano and voice string and guitar and voice whatever and voice right mm-hmm. because if if your only root position chords or your chords are moving around where the where the top note is is doing large intervals then you're going to detract from the vocal Mm-hmm. Right, and you always want the vocal to be the star, and this uh, the instruments are there to support. So and that's something I learned way back when. I was, I was I, I never called it voice leading. I always called it like like more blocky chords, like all the blocks are kind of in the same. They're not moving around too much. Um, so whatever you want to call it, but but that, that's kind of the idea is to keep it fairly rounded and solid, while mm-hmm. while the voice is doing all the all the fancy stuff. Okay, yeah. shall shall we listen to the uh, whole song then? Absolutely. All right, let's take a listen to the whole thing, and including that fantastic bridge. So keep a listen out for that. <laughs> Stop talking, but now you only speak when spoken to. So tell me, where did we go wrong? Is there something I Smile 
and you get all nervous and look down at the floor. You used to tell me how much that you love me. I never hear you say that anymore. that last chord oh yeah, yeah. The, the minor chord at the end yeah i love little things yeah. like that yeah. you know leave you hanging on leave it. them hanging yeah. nothing wrong with that awesome stuff That's there's great. so many yeah there's so many things i like about this song i love the um the the, the chorus will tell me where do we go wrong it's a little minor thing happening there really it's 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 you know prosody 101 wrong we wanted to sound kind of dark <laughs> right that we're wrong it sounds wrong <laughs> not wrong but you know what i mean <laughs> it doesn't it didn't sound so happy and it, just that melancholy thing um and i love the way that when the bridge hit I mean, the bridge is fantastic because it's rhythmically more intense it's it's something you know we, we did a we did an episode a while back with uh, alistair bradley um, oh, yes. you guys know from Song, Song Studio about bridges where, you know, something, something I've come to realize only in the last few years, maybe that, you know, everyone always talks about the chorus being the high point of the song, but a lot of songs I love, the bridge is actually the high energy point yeah. of the song. And, and that makes a really cool twist. And the way you guys dropped into it, you, the, the, the chorus cuts short. You didn't do the with you. You just launch right into the bridge, which is a nice surprise. Yeah, nice. It's a very soft kind of surprise, but it really, 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 really good. You guys said the bridge wasn't wasn't always there, or it was came That's later. Right. Yeah, the bridge was uh, the recent addition. Yeah. What made you decide to put in the bridge? <laughs> yeah, well, I, there, there just was nothing there. It was just a really short song before, so um, it didn't seem like it should have like a instrumental or anything but um yeah we we had just discussed it kind of in that song studio workshop and alex uh had a lot of really good input on on uh, the bridge like ideas for that um, i think I, uh, <laughs> um i don't know if this reflects well on me or not but like I, I think it kind of comes back to my like micromanaging tendencies because i heard this song and i was instantly a fan of it and i was like aaron it needs a bridge like mm -hmm. i need a bridge like there has to be like i just i, I think it was one of um kind of uh, <laughs> like a nagging oh. moment and I, I think that was probably our maybe our fourth or fifth bridge like it it, it took a couple tries to yeah. because oh, it's such yeah. a you know like um, she kept it, it's, saying it's a, that it didn't slap her in the face hard enough. Yeah, I was like, I need this, <laughs> like, I need this bridge to kick me in the face. Like, that's how I need to feel when I hear the bridge because it's such a painful song, and the bridge needs to be the most painful, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it, it took. Um, but anyways, I, I'm I'm still very I'm very proud of that bridge. I, I really um, yeah. I'm really glad. It's, 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 it's my favorite part of the song, hands down. 
you very <laughs> Thank you. And I think that's an important point when people are writing a song is that sometimes it takes a lot of work to get a bridge mm. or, you know, to get that second verse. And it may be two months. Um, and I know I said this before, but Elvis Costello is often said he's working on a song and there's one line that doesn't work and he picks it up and he boots it around for, you know, a couple hours and he puts it back in and the next month he takes it up and he says it can last a year, you know, before he gets something that's good enough. And I think that's an important thing to realize. Sometimes it takes lots of tries and go, okay, well, that didn't work. How about this? And, you know, push to get the the quality that you want to get to. Don't just go, well, it's kind of good enough. Because mm -hmm. that's always yeah, dangerous. Absolutely. Always a good thing. Are, are, the, are the chords different in the bridge? Yeah, yes. it's, it's a two, five, one in the bridge. So it's a little bit different. Okay. Okay, but it's it's still in key. It's the, you didn't you guys didn't mind still the key bridge. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. That's nice. Yeah, and, and the rhythms, uh, you know, the rhythm gives it a lot of um, contrast to the uh, verse and the chorus. Because yeah. the verse and the contrast, because the verse and the chorus have similar pacing in terms of of, of the melody, but the bridge is perfect because it has like it really is a, a palate cleanser. Because it's rhythmically very different, although it's not like you're going to a totally different key center. So um, you know, just just having that rhythmic change can be enough to uh, cleanse the palate so that you load up the last verse. You know, definitely. Yeah. And you know, I, I think one one of one of the choices um, that we made that I, I really like is after the intensity of that bridge, having the breakdown chorus, you know, for the, mm -hmm. the chorus three um, always felt really good to me as well. Yeah, yeah, really emphasize those, those yeah. lines of contrast. It's always a, always a great thing. Yeah, yeah, because you, you, don't, you don't really expect something like that given the, the really, really minimal beginning. Yeah, of the song and it just builds up gradually and it's still soft, it's still soft, and then whammo. Yeah, yeah, yeah a, a, a great, great tune. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Reminds me a little bit of um, the very first Tori Amos song I ever heard, Pretty Good Year, where the bridge just explodes out of that song and then goes super quiet again. Yep. Like, that's a good yeah. one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Can't go wrong with Tori Amos. No, <laughs> certainly not. So what's uh, what's next for this? Well, I it's think out on so. all the platforms and everything now, right? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's officially it's released been out for a bit. Yep. And um, yeah, I guess we we keep promoting. Aaron and I have we each have um, our own. Uh, solo music kind of uh, to release coming up. We're both working on new EPs. Uh, cool. How's yours going, Aaron? <laughs> Are you done recording? <laughs> I'm not done the whole EP yet, but I just finished my next single that's coming out soon. So really excited about that. Cool. It's always exciting to finally have like a finished thing that you're just like, I have this. Nobody else knows about it. You know, it's kind of a cool <laughs> feeling. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> sure. How are you um, putting this stuff out into the market? Are you using like a service like DistroKid or one of those things or? Yeah. Uh, yeah, we use Dist uh, well, well, she used her distributor for the, I tried to use the distributor, but it didn't allow for splits on the distributor that I was going to use. Oh. That's, yeah, that's another thing. Like there's collaborating this way, um, like not only like in the studio, but getting doing a release collaboratively was was really interesting yeah, for both of us, um, yeah. and, and frustrating. And because, uh, <laughs> yeah, we we had we were all ready to upload it using one distributor um, only to find out that that distributor was unable to handle royalty splits um, automatically um, through weird. their portal, which mm. would have been a big headache if one person had to calculate, you know, yeah, the yeah, royalties oh, yeah. and divide them by three because we, um, us and, and our producer, Matt Riches, we, we split uh, we split the points evenly between ourselves. Mm. Um, so then we had to, you know, do the work and, and uh, find a distributor that could do that automatically. And um, so, you know, there, there were little 
kind of things like that. Like, I think that'll be helpful, though, because as both of us do more co-writes, we're going to have to you know, be able to do that on the back end. So uh, thanks, Indie Pool, for having your stuff together. Um, and uh, what was the other? I mean, there, there were some other um, kind of interesting, you know, I, I think it was actually, you know, releasing music is my least favorite part. I'm, I'm in the same mode as Aaron <laughs> right now. I have two EPs uh, done um, oh, wow. <laughs> right now. Uh, one is coming out Because um, you really July. hate releasing, you're just going to vault everything? It's, you know, it, it's just that it, ta- it takes a long like, time. So, like, it, <laughs> I don't want to... I, I don't... I don't know. I, it, I wish... I feel like most people would agree with me. You know, writing press releases is not what why I got into this business, right? Mm. Uh, making TikToks, like I I make as many TikToks as I can. Please follow me on TikTok. I put a lot of work <laughs> into that, but like that's not why I got into this. So being able to you know split things, um, you know, some you know we we split up the tasks. Um, you know, when it came to doing the release and it made it definitely a lot less um, stressful than, than it, I, it, it can be. Um, but yeah, I, I've got, um, I'm going to be releasing, I have an EP of piano solos um, coming out this summer. And after that, um, I have another EP of um, singer songwriter music that I will have to release by myself, sadly. Mm-hmm. Um, no. <laughs> Um, is, is your piano EP that those those are all originals? Yeah, yeah. Oh, nice. Um, How many songs? Been four. Nice. Four. It, it was uh, an Ontario Arts Council funded project, so it was kind of a situation where, like, for me in the lockdowns, um, I didn't, I, you know, I, I was so confused about things. It was hard for me to to write lyrics and feel connected to them during that time. It was mm. really confusing and kind of a blur, but I, I found I could I could play instruments and uh, I felt like that made sense. So I ended up writing some instrumental music and applying for funding and, and then I got some. So I, I just recorded all the songs uh, that the grant would cover. Um, right. And I think, yeah, so uh, that's that's how that came to be. That's going to be out I'm doing a single, I think, the last week of July, and then it's going to be out August 1st. Cool. Um, yeah. Thanks. I'm when, when's yours coming out, Erin? Uh, I don't have a release date specifically, mm-hmm. but sometime this fall, like late October is where I'm aiming for the EP release. Cool. Yeah. My next tune will come out next month, uh, probably the end of next month. All right. We'll definitely look forward to those. Excellent. That was a definitely a great tune. Yeah, <laughs> fantastic. You know, it would be fun to um, to do more. <laughs> like, I wonder has because you you hear about like what one album that comes to mind is the Joni Mitchell Mingus and and Mingus oh, album, yeah. right? Like, you know, people. I I was just going to ask the question. Like, I wonder if um, you know how how popular is it because it's. It, you see albums all the time where one singer features on one song and another singer features on another song and it's, mm. it's one primary artist, right? But I wonder how common is it, um, you know, for two groups to come together and do a whole album because I I can't think of any other than that one, Joni mm. and Mingus, but mm. right now, um, I don't know. I just, this was just... Yeah. Well, there, I think yeah. there's a Wilco, uh, Billy Bragg, they did a bunch of stuff together. Mm. Um, but yeah, no, I think you should. It's That's a great thing. Like it's, I know it's a pain to do all the distribution and stuff yourself, but it's actually a lot easier than it used to be like, you know, 30 okay. years ago. <laughs> so, you know, you can do those things and try, well, let's try this release together and see what happens. Mm-hmm. Maybe magic happens, you know, maybe magic hits, maybe. And, and, and maybe because it's not so common, that's a very good reason for you guys to do it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Must you stand out, right? It's one of those ways. I mean, if that's what the people want, like, <laughs> yeah. uh, no, I, and I think you know, it, it, it's also um, 
there, there are lots of, uh, I mean, this song obviously is a sad one, which like Aaron, if you heard Aaron's mu- music, Aaron writes like really up-tempo, optimistic, happy stuff. Um, and I tend to do mostly ballads. So I, I think like, you know, if, if the opportunity comes up again and like, I mean, we do write together once in a while, so, uh, you know, it, it could, um, I think, you know, it would be, it would be fun. Um, to kind of jump into something that's a little more poppy for me once in a while. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> can meet in the middle, right? It's kind of like, yeah, um, yeah I don't really. Know. Although the last co-write, we we uh, we ended up working on a, another sad one, so I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> I, I find it time. easier to write sad songs. Oh, uh, is for it? Sure. Are you I kidding? Don't know. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Every time I get on a co-write with Aaron, I'm like, great, we're going to write something happy. (laughs) (laughs) It's harder harder to write a happy song and actually be earnest and honest as opposed to saccharine and cheesy. Whereas if you just go sad, it's all good. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. It's easier to bring out those emotions in sad songs, but it's it's harder to to show those emotions with words in happy songs. True, yeah, yeah. yeah. (laughs) Very true, very true. Okie dokie. I think um, that's about all the time we have. This has uh, been Song Talk Radio. Special thanks to Alex Worms and Aaron John. Um, so our listeners obviously can hear this song um, on uh, all the platforms and stuff. Um, where, where, where can they hear uh, your individual, uh, your solo work? Well, I am on all social media channels at Alex Forms, and my website is alexworms.com, where you can sign up for my email list if you're interested. Can you spell Worms for us, please? <laughs> yeah, it's really, thank you. W-H-O-R-M-S. Cool. And Aaron? And I'm I'm Aaron John on the Spotify and Apple Music and all that, and on the socials, I'm Aaron John Jams. Jams. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Nice. Right on. Okay, <laughs> we'll certainly link to all that uh, good stuff from our show post um, on songtalk.ca. And uh, we want to hear from you. So please send your comments on Facebook or Instagram to at songtalkradio or send us an email feedback at songtalk.ca. And be sure to check out our YouTube channel for live performance videos and full episodes. And subscribe today to the Song Talk Radio podcast on your favorite podcast provider. You can find links to all the products, books, and web services we mentioned on the show on our resources page page on the website and please join us at our next monthly song talk meetup whether you're in toronto for our in-person meetups or anywhere in the world for our online meetups it's free to join on meetup.com and free to attend the meetup bring a song and a lyric sheet and get constructive feedback from other songwriters stop by songtalk.ca for the link uh, you can follow me at uh, neilmodi.com and uh, phil philemory.ca and alex what's your favorite social let's say tiktok <laughs> TikTok? TikTok or Instagram. TikTok. I'm split. Instagram? <laughs> uh, Aaron, what, what, what's, your, what, what's your go-to social? Uh, mine is Instagram. Instagram for sure. Okay, we'll link to those things. And uh, thanks for listening, everybody. Be sure to stop by the website, songtalk.ca, to browse past shows and find out how you can be a guest. Thanks for tuning in and keep, keep on, on writing. writing. Yeah. <laughs>